ready to go. We're up at Daintree, ready to do the Snapper Island surveys. At last, we hope, the weather's come right. The Daintree River. Yay! Who that there? Ah, oh, hiya, Bill. Good mate. Yes. Yep. Yep. I saw the boat, I thought it was using, and I saw you, I thought, no, they're too young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you going? Oh, pretty good. Good now, the sun's come out anyway. Oh, yeah, Christ. The wind is gone. Been a while, eh? Yeah. It's been, been so windy. <laughs> oh, you're looking good. Good to see you again. Yeah. See you later. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Right, well here we are at Snapper Island again, beautiful Snapper Island, and we're coming up to do coral surveys, which we've done annually for about 25 years, and we first did our surveys here in 1983, so it's really interesting seeing how the reefs change over time. That's the best part of this work, is seeing what happens over long periods of time to the reef. So we're here just ready to dive. We've got permanent transects down here and we go down and use these tapes to mark out 20 meter transects and survey the corals along them. So we're just going to do that now. Stakes we use to mark our permanent transects can rust away in just a few years and we need to replace them regularly. Here's Avril banging in a new stake on one of the northern shallow sites. These stakes don't damage the reef and in fact they often get corals growing on or over them. These northern sites were badly damaged by two cyclones about 10 years ago. Lots of small seaweeds grew on the dead coral rubble at two of the shallow sites, and this has slowed down the recovery of corals. A 
A number of Tripnustes sea urchins were eating this rich seaweed food and they were well camouflaged with pieces of seaweed stuck to their tube feet. Three what? Three large trip musty. Oh, urchins. really? Yeah, they were really well camouflaged. Get some There's of, one get... right beside the anchor chain. Did you get some? Yep, I took some photos. Hmm. <clears throat> Corals had recovered quickly from the cyclone damage at one of the northern sites and this now has great coral cover again with almost no seaweed. We surveyed one of the northern deep sites and found the water to be incredibly murky with only a few metres of underwater visibility. This is rather unpleasant but it also makes it hard to find the transect marker stakes. We managed it in the end. Mm -hmm. It was low tide when we came back through the Daintree River entrance on our way home after our first day of diving. This meant we had to take the long way round to avoid the exposed sandbar at the river mouth. And this diversion adds over four kilometres to our return trip. From the drone, the amazing sand patterns created by the river flow are revealed. It's cold. <laughs> Look at the river steaming. Yeah. Nice. I'll get some car. You just have to use that. You put it in your pocket yesterday. Stuff. It's alright, the other stuff is fine. Shallow reefs on the south side of Snapper Island are dominated by Parites boulder corals of all sizes, with fields of Acropora corals amongst them. Blue corals, also known as Heliopera, are also common here. This is a unique type of soft coral that is not soft at all, but has a hard blue-coloured skeleton, hence its name.
deeper southern reefs on Snapper Island are unusually rich. They are home to many very large corals of various species. Branching parietes corals like these are common here. We came across a group of three colourful lionfish on a coral head near one of our transects. We couldn't resist pausing to photograph these beautiful fish. Huge knobbly colonies of a coral called Parietes rus are very common on this deep reef. Other large corals in this habitat include staghorn acropora thickets, sheets of echinopora coral and blue corals. Lots of estuarine crocodiles live in the Daintree River and when the tide is low during winter they haul out to sunbathe on the muddy banks. We saw lots of them during our afternoon trips homeward bound up the river. Hello on the bank over here. Oh, there you go. Big crocodile, sunbathing in the afternoon sun, doesn't want to go.
The deep northern reefs on Snapper Island are also home to some large corals, especially the brown Pachycerus corals with their lettuce-like colonies. These corals were badly damaged by coral bleaching in 2017, but the surviving fragments have since spread out over the dead parts of their colonies and are mostly completely recovered. Some severely damaged colonies are still in the process of regrowing from tiny parts that survived the bleaching. This large anemone with its attendant Nemo anemone fish has been next to one of our transects since we first set up the deep site 16 years ago. It's not changed over that time and we have no idea how old it must be. We went ashore on one of the northern beaches between dives to check out the forest and the flowering golden orchids that are so common on this island. There's lots of golden orchids here on Snapper Island and all the rocky outcrops up in the trees. So many of them surviving in the harshest environment here. Hoya oh, vine here. Can't see any flowers. Exploring on Snapper Island, such a beautiful place. Rainforest and reef. Under the pandanus. And then straight into the rainforest. Don't let your worries weigh you down, down, down. In the trees. You can still take life. Or go your earth by.
We had to repair the marker stakes at one of the deep southern sites because the corals had grown up over many of our stakes. We used the opportunity to have a bit of an explore of these interesting reefs. As usual, the Parades Rust colonies amaze us with their size and thickness. Some of these colonies are over 50 metres across. Juncela seawoods grow amongst the corals on these reefs and can form dense gardens up to two metres high. Tony opera corals are very common here and can also be over 50 metres across. These corals are unusual in having all their polyps expanded during the day, whereas most corals only expand their polyps at night. Tony opera colonies often have small parts of the coral bleached white, even when the water is cold. We're not sure why this happens, but the affected parts do not usually die. We were surprised to find during this survey that most of the bare parts of the reef were covered in lots of new Acropora coral babies. These rapid growing corals will soon cover any dead parts of the reef. This isn't fancy enough. Picnic on the beach.
As we motored away from the island to start our trip home, we were surrounded by a loose group of false killer whales. These dolphin-like whales are four to five metres long and feed on fish. They came to check out our boat and used us as a fence to help them capture the tuna and mackerel they were hunting. It was an exciting ten minutes or so as they shared our bit of the ocean for a brief time. Big. 